Hey, good morning, guys. It is Guido and Pilgrim. I'm Guido. This guy over here, over here, is is is, is Pilgrim from the United Pilgrim. Kingdom. Hi, guys. Good morning. It's coffee time. I got my coffee, man. What are you, are you teeing it up today? Of course, I've got tea. But uh, as we said always, in one of your mugs, shill, shill, mm. shill. Buy buy Guido's mugs. Buy buy a mug from Teespring, yeah. then you too yeah. can drink tea from a coffee mug, <laughs> just like just like Pilgrim. <laughs> Philistine that I am. Yes. Is it Philistine or Philistine? I always thought it was Philistine. Well, it's probably um, depending on which area of the world you're from. So yeah, could be yeah. an Atlantic I, thing. I of the world. Yeah. Let's mention the Canadian flag. Shall ah, we? very good. We Considering the talking about the left side of the Atlantic, there's the Canadians. There, there you go. Who say because, Philistine? Because what salute now? They are. They are Canadians. Yeah. Make sure you do your ID me thing. I saw I saw a forum post regarding that. Some guy saying, "Do you think that ID me is part of a Russian uh, Russian intel op?" Yeah, yeah. going to clock you all. I, you know what? Maybe. Who knows? The the number of the mean? number of the, the amount of data you give away by just putting an app on your phone. You know what I mean? It's it's yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. All right, it is coffee talk, guys. It is coffee talk. I am here. Let's see. Channel news. Uh, safe and hunker down. We are all well. How about you guys over there, Pilgrim? Everybody. Absolutely. Um, we're looking at slight uh, release on Monday of various mm. things going into like a phase one. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. Yeah, it's getting a little silly over here. I think there's a, a multiple things coming together, but uh, we'll just leave that as it is. Uh, 100 Battle Challenge for me, I am back to getting. I'm. The, the plan now is tier five and above every tank to 100 battles. That's that's the goal. Since I've sort of given up on the 279E for now, we'll, we'll get back to that later. But So I got the uh, Super Conqueror up to 100. I finally aced that stupid tank. Wow. Yeah. I'm not very good at it, man. One, I only have one mark, like 71%, one mark at 100 battles. Only 2,400 DPG, which is terrible for a, a tier 10. You guys can see it in the garage. Sitting right there. But I got it to 100 and I aced it, so pretty happy about that. Next stream will be Monday from 4 to 6 Central Time. And then Friday, that will be the stack up one. And then Friday, I will do probably another stream. That's my next day off for next week. And the contest, you know the contest is the last day today. It's the last day today for the contest. Absolutely. That surprised me. I, I got up and like, all right, what are we going to talk about today? So, yeah, we got to mention the contest. and. I was going to thinking, all right, I'll say the month long contest is going on. And then I thought, well, the, the month long contest is going gone. Gone? Yeah. Yeah, it hasn't it gone quick? I didn't realize it's been two weeks. Yeah. I probably have, we probably have 30, 40 submissions, maybe closer to 40 at this point. Oh, that's cool. And I just got a, uh, I, I just got the, the, I just got the game, I think, that I'm going to feature for, oh, for the whole hit point thing. It is nice. a, a 5,000 damage. Is it, I still have it. It's a five thousand damage E twenty five game, tier okay. tier seven, and at least six. And I, I don't know if there's fives in it. There may be fives in it, but it's not. Oh, he's not top tier. Massive. I think. Yeah. <laughs> and and they lost. And there was I think like five tanks on the enemy team left. Yeah. <laughs> Holy so there's cow. another there's another two thousand damage to be had. <laughs> yeah, depending on their hit points. I mean, I don't know what their hit points yeah, yeah. look like, but yeah, I, that's kind of what I figure. Another maybe gram to two thousand left out there. Right. Right. And his team didn't do great, but it wasn't like they were all five hundred. There was a couple, okay. you know, a couple thousands here and there. It might have even been a two thousand in amongst his team. Well, they're, 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 if you need any sort of proof at all, which I, I think it's we already knew all that anyway. Yeah, there's proof in the pudding, isn't it? It's. Um, I can't imagine having a five thousand damage game in an E twenty five prior to the prior to the um, increase in HP. I'm sure they were out there, but yeah, Probably. I'm with you. I bet there's a lot more, and you know, it's a sample of one and all that good stuff. But I, I thought yeah. that one really probably really probably illustrated the uh, the. I was almost going to say the problem. It's not a problem, just the change, I guess. Really. Right, and you've yeah. got a hat. I take it you've got a hat that you're gonna you're gonna do this. And, uh, yeah, I don't Next know how week. I'm going to do Next that, week. man. I'm how not, are you going to do that? I don't know. Uh, there's there's a couple there's a couple uh, apps on my streaming stuff that do like uh, spinning wheels and some other things like that. I might I'll try to set that up if I can. 
probably find one online. Just put all the names in a spinning wheel and do it right there live. Or, yeah. or I'll do the hat thing. Okay. I suppose if I just do a bunch of pieces of paper with numbers uh, and then number yeah. everyone's name, I could pull that hat and it'd be easy enough. Alright. Okay, cool. Uh, do, you want, do you want me to stretch across and put my hand in and pick Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome? You have to go the other way. Oh, gotta... to the UK. <laughs> you have to go the other way though. Oh, oh, oh over there. Yeah, because you... go that way. Yeah, you reached off the screen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he went that way. <laughs> Alright, remember guys. <laughs> T today's the last day, so if you haven't sent one in, just send me a Tier 7 replay of any kind. And the top prize is a Tier 8, free Tier 8, with $50 donated in your name to stackup.org and $50 donated in your name to the charity of your choice. Thank you to Pilgrim for those charity donations and the Tier 8. And then Wargaming has given us another Tier 8 for the second place. And then two Tier 6s, one Tier 6 for each third place third place and fourth place which is which is well decent to all game because they didn't have to did they that's no they did not so fantastic on them that's very good remember uh, the code guido grind if you're trying to start a new account that's my code which will get you a little bit of premium a little bit of gold a ram 2 and some personal reserves and that's it that's all the channel i don't think i have any more channel news that's it Missions okay. and specials. Missions and specials. Let us go. We're gonna start with the shilling. We're gonna do. We're gonna do it right today, Pilgrim. Yes, I think so. Today I've got them all open now. So I had a. Uh, <laughs> I once had a, a commander, and we had a big inspection coming up. So he gets us all together. I've been working on this inspection for a long time. We're going into random stories right now, by the way. I've been working on this inspection for a long time. And I'm going back to what I just said about now it's time to do things right. And we're probably about three weeks out. It's one of those inspections in the Air Force that you probably need to be working on for six months to a year just to get all your ducks in a row. It's a paperwork exercise or inspection, not an operational inspection. It's come in and look at all your paperwork, make sure it's all done right. He gets us all together. He hasn't really been paying attention. He gets up there. And he's like, all right. Now we are in the time of doing things right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, like we've not done it right before, but we're going to get there now, aren't we? Yes, because yesterday, last week, <coughs> that, Excuse me. that was not the time of doing things right. But now, I need you to do things right. Right, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to shill because this is the right way to do it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I have 15,000 stories about that guy. All right. <laughs> no, the type of guy you're on about. Oh, my goodness. All right, so we're into featured items. And we have the Locust. Looks like the IS-6 and the TOG-2 are still up there, along with the Super Pershing with the cool camo. I did put that camo on my Super. It looks cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yep, cool. I like that quite a bit. And then we've got the these packages that were available for me, I think, for the ID me thing. You don't have those, right? The packages that no, are broken up. I, I've got none of the packages at all that, yeah. that, that equates to you. It says one for you, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, they're broken out by country. So you can get a whole you can get a whole group of oh, yeah. premiums for yeah. anywhere from hundred to two hundred, depending on which package. Gold, not much going on there. As I always say, they're they're small packages for like three days or a little bit of gold in three days just to kind of check out the game those are always good deals compared to what the rest of their stuff costs nothing really going on premium accounts although you can can use coupons vehicles what's in here stuff we just talked about scorpion g the lurva yeah i'm not seeing anything kind of a lull right now in yeah in specials I see nothing there. The, the, um, if you if you are in you're in specials, right? If I go to specials uh, in Europe, the difference is here we go. Is they got the turtle up? Really? They've yeah the Skoda twenty seven. We have the and, Skoda. And the thing that I noticed that made me chuckle, given what Dimitri said last week on the developers' diaries. They've got the Progetto up for sale. 
which is going to be nerfed. Possibly. No, no, that's maybe. The, no, that's the tier ten Progetto is going to be nerfed. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Although I don't. Uh, I, I, yeah, the premiums are not. To, that's a whole subject. They're not going to touch the premiums. Okay. Yeah, we should, we could right. we could delve into that for weeks. Yeah, that whole thing was that. Yeah, jeez, they're not touching premiums. They're not touching reward tanks. Um, But they are going to nerf. They are going to nerf the Progetto. Still, people. There are still people trying to rationalize all that kind of thing. That's crazy. Anyway, yep. So that was terrible shilling. We did not shill very well. So this rookie, I have the thing called Rookie Kickstart. It says available to me, so you may not see it. I think I mentioned it last week, but it's a $7.50 package, but you can get it for $1.99. It's three days of premium, 500 gold, and 100,000 credits for two bucks. That's a heck of a deal, man. Isn't it just, yeah, especially yeah. if you're starting off and you want to, you want to, you know, you just want to see what the game's about. It gives you an insight in what the benefits are of having a premium account. Yeah. It gives you, you know, all that sort of good stuff. Take a long weekend, just get your three days of premium, yeah. a little bit of gold to move stuff around and go to it. 100,000 credits. If you, like I said last week, if you go through their, their missions, because early on in the missions, when you start a new account, you can get to tier six pretty quickly, and they give you a lot of days in there and goodies. When that gets to the end, and you get up to a long weekend, and you want to just do a little power grinding on a weekend, grab this thing, and then you get a good idea of what the game's like. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm sure people do that kind of thing. Yeah, I have just told them a, a secret that nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> well, that was a good shield. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I recovered, did I? I just, yeah, you did I just recovered. You did, well. You did well. Oh, fantastic! I think it's my influence. I think it's my input about the European server. I mean, it's, just, it's all rubbish. <laughs> Are we cool, Dimitri? Did I do it right? Did I? Yeah, oh, we did it. Okay, we did it. <laughs> You'll be on the phone to you next week. <laughs> it's, he's ringing. He's ringing right now. <laughs> all right, let's go back and check out the specials and whatnot as far as uh, missions and things. So. We have, we'll talk about Sandbox 2.0 in a minute. Sneak Preview, I'm going to go there. So Sneak Preview 2020. The following events are subject to change without notice. Yes, we're we're definitely aware of that. Battle Pass 1 ends June 9th, so that's coming to a close. I'm not actually going to get to the end of the bonus stuff. I thought I might, and I'm not even going to really come. I'm at 54, which isn't really close because there's 100 levels. 100 levels. I've yeah. seen some people with 97. You know, they have the badge against the name. Oh, really? I've seen some people with 97. Oh, I was yeah. like, what do you do all day? The, this. Yeah, definitely. Now, there were times when I was playing that much, but that's that's not lately. You know what I'm getting crushed by right now? And I can't figure it. Well, I don't know why I would be able to figure it out, but I know what the problem is. There's a one of the jumps. It's called Telia.net, which is one of the big providers for internet. Not my personal provider, but provider for traffic around the country. There's a hop in Chicago that's kicking my rear starting at about noon every day for the last five days. So it goes from a 20 or 30 ping and jumps up to 80 to 100, but adds in a sweet little 5% packet loss, which is way fun. That's where you get those little jerky motions and, you know, the the time you poke to take a shot, but you actually go about two yeah. tank lakes further than you wanted and then you're dead yeah, yeah you've gone are... through the bush as well yeah. you yeah. try and stop at the bush and yeah. keep going and it's <laughs> it's it only happens when you're trying to do that you know what i mean yeah <laughs> at least that's what it seems yeah. like that's didn't they remember about three years ago they had a massive problem with <clears throat> with all of that and they you know when they, before they changed over yeah. locations they had i think it was three different servers in the u.s um, it's. I've asked people, and I got a friend in town. He's got a different. He's got a different local provider who I assume has a different has a different uh, routing structure, probably different um, contracts with with the providers. He doesn't get it. He has no problem. But he's with a different local guy. provider. My local provider apparently, or whatever for whatever reason, my signal goes through that node, and that node has been kicking my rear. Yeah. And it doesn't happen in the morning. As a matter of fact, if I look at if I look at this. Yeah, I'm sitting at 35. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, well, so yeah. we'll see if I it does. Sorry, I, won't, I didn't mean to interrupt and, and just knock you down a little bit, but, you know, I sort of deal with 100 ping daily. 
<laughs> when I play the AI server. This, so I've, I've got no sympathy for you, mate. You know, 100 I'm, I'm is, every day. It's unacceptable, <laughs> Pilgrim. Unex I am a professional gamer, and I do not have time for it. <laughs> oh, dear. Bless you. <laughs> I don't think to be fair, I don't I'll think... tell you, here's, here's the rub. My Euro server, I get anywhere between 1 and 22 ping, but I still get lag all the time. Oh, all really? The time. Really? Yeah, it's horrendous. The old twitching turret. Like oh, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the packet yeah. loss. That's the packet yeah. loss kicking your room. Absolutely. Absolutely. Horrendous it is. Hmm. So... I think there's a donkey in EU server that, that doesn't pedal quite quick enough to make it work. Some ass over there. Oh, donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, that donkey. was a bit of a tangent. <laughs> Can you not be yourself for three minutes? <laughs> All right. Battle Pass. Where were we? Battle Pass. And then uh, Gold Pass. Map is going on till the 15th. We have the 10-year anniversary Act 2 to the 15th. I hope you all honked your horns. I didn't do it once. I actually tried and I couldn't hear it. I think it's because I had that settings down so much because I don't have yeah, my yeah. sounds up. Yeah. I never I never heard a horn. That was what I don't know. If it's well, there, there's there's a little secret you've given away because most of the good CCs, not all CCs yeah. Yeah. are bad, but they are good. But most of the good players do that with the sound. They only want to hear um, sounds like explosions going off close and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean that may be that may be why I'm not super unicum. I just don't have the the 3D uh, sound thing. Sound. I'm just a I'm just an everyday Unicom. Yeah. I'm a sad subpar Unicom because I don't know how to use sounds. I it could you know every advantage that you can use. Yeah. This is an interesting discussion because we talk about this, especially in, in fighter aviation, quite a bit because yeah. of sensor fusing and SA systems that you have now with sit displays and multiple things. In my aircraft, one of the earlier fourth gen the se sensors aren't fused very well, meaning they're not all kind of in one place. So I've got stuff scattered around the cockpit and I got to have a good cross check. Whereas with the, the fifth gen stuff and the newer jets, the Raptor, the F-35, a lot of that stuff is all together on a central central right. display. That makes sense, doesn't it? That makes but there's a lot, sense. right? There's a lot of colors, like there's that. a lot of stuff. So the question is always, how much stuff can we put on there how how much of it yeah. does the pilot use? How much can that person personally process? And that's yeah. one of those things as well. And it's one of the reasons why in tanks you see somebody come up to a corner and they start brawling and they're in sniper mode and they're fighting one guy, right? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they don't have that ability you to... You don't see that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So if, if guys like Skill and those guys can take that kind of information into account and add that into their cross-check, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all five senses plus the six senses, right. isn't it? And yeah, the better you so, get at stuff, the more you're able to process nuances like that that wouldn't mean a damn thing. You could tell you could tell an 800 to win eight person to turn their sounds up and listen for things breaking, and it wouldn't do a damn thing for them until they were able to get good enough to deal with the other stuff they're trying to do yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's not to say you don't tell them that that's that's a goal. No, I think I think that is the the finesse at the top level. I yeah. think you know you can you you do all your skill sets going up. But it's the little nuances in the finesse that differentiate between, as you say, super unicorns and average players. Yeah. It's that. It's all that little things. It's like Tiger Woods. You get the, he talks a lot about changing his swing all the time. And you might have, when he yeah. was young, you go, well, why the hell would you mess with your swing? You were absolutely kicking rear. But he's always trying to those extra little technical finesse things yeah. just to change yeah. something up that he's trying to fix a problem he knows he has. And yeah. unless you were at that skill level, you can't really appreciate what the hell that means because it's yeah. it's really important at top yeah. skill levels when people start to bring in. Because the thing about getting to a top skill level, and I talk about this a lot, is you always want to try to improve whatever it is you're doing. And when you're really bad at something, you can sometimes see some really fast improvements, but there's always those plateaus. And yeah. so an improvement at the top level skill level is this tiny sliver. Tiny, tiny yeah. little thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly that, which gives you a millisecond of, yep. over, over, over the other guy. And it may just have been a very small technical thing you change in whatever it is that, that you're doing to somebody, yeah. you know, 10 levels below. They're like, what the hell? How, how would that do anything? Well, yeah, no, it wouldn't for you. Yeah. You're not there, you know? I mean, personally, I, I changed my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> 
I know like, the reason they came in. I you mean like if you're walking around the I house? Those ones, because they're bigger. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the extent of my skill level. Oh, I you're... change my glasses. So, <laughs> so if you're if you're moving the walker through the house and you run into something that you can't see, then you you pull out the bigger glasses. <laughs> yeah, and then I go, "Oh, it's the wife." <laughs> <laughs> What's she doing there? What are you doing stood there? <laughs> Good, okay. Good job. She's not listening to this. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy gosh. All right, so Tank Rewards has ended. Make sure you get your... The May Tank Rewards has ended. Make sure you go get your gifts. Tankrewards.com, right? Is that what it is? I think it is. Tankrewards.com. Yeah, but it will pay us somewhere. Yeah. The June one starts June 3rd, which is a couple days from now. <clears throat> so get ready for it. It is not up right now. The old one's still there, so you can get your prizes. So I don't know what the prizes are on this one. There might be some essays somewhere, but we'll find out soon enough. YouTube series. I think Michael Lovin's YouTube series. Not he's not coming back, but they're doing. Oh, you know, oh, they're shy. doing something like that. Is what I believe. There was some mention of it on the CC channel, but I don't know any details other than on Friday, June fifth. Looks like they're going to bring some kind of uh, Watt and a YouTube series back. So oh, is this what this um, is this what this this YouTube video? I believe a surprise I, on Friday. I believe so. I believe so. Okay, all right. Because uh, I was going to ask you about that because yeah. I just had a quick look. So Friday next week on the fifth of June, there's a surprise for the NA server. Yeah, it's not, I'm not 100 percent on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going on with that one. All right, that's cool. That's cool. I like I like that, that young man. He was quite he was quite dapper with his with yeah. his bow tie. Yeah, yeah, it was quite fun. I, I met him when I went out to D Day Connie. A really nice guy. Uh, right. Moved on to bigger and better. All right. On track missions looks like the British tier 10. So that's the Centurion. Okay. So not the heavy, but the medium. And then the Sturve yeah. Bush snipers will be the two on tracks for June, starting on the 5th for the one. Sales that are coming up. <clears throat> oh, look, the gross tractor. Oh, boy. Yeah. And yeah. that's a 30 days premium account. You get you get the gross tractor with it. Oh, there you go, there you go. Primo Victoria, Marbrecker, Panzer Fifty Eight, the Senlac, and the WZ One Eleven, and WZ One Eleven Alpine Tiger. Alpine Tiger, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's see. Hey, what would I recommend? Primo Victoria is good. Su Eighty Five is a low tier premium. Marbrecker is not very good. The Forty Five Hundred Three is very good at tier seven. The Panzer Fifty Eight is a serviceable medium. Senlac is a, a pretty good scout. 1357 is an amazing scout at tier 7. Yeah. The WZ-111 and the Alpine Tiger are both preferential matchmaking tanks, which three years ago were amazing and are now kind of meh. So that's my thoughts on those. Gross Tractor, you're, you're only buying that for the 30 days. <laughs> yeah. June Special Missions. Tanks and Metals, Tanks and Aces. Was Were those those missions they turned on on NA for like a, a couple days? And then turned oh, off. Oh, could have been. Yeah, could have been. Isn't that yeah. the same name? I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think yeah. they are. I think they are. I think I'm pretty sure it's the same name. They were on, and people were completing them, but they weren't getting the prizes. And everyone's like, "What's going yeah. on?" And then they just disappeared, and there was yeah. no real word other than, "Oh, sorry, that was a mistake." And here they are again. So I, <laughs> here they are. But as you say, the following events are subject to change without notice. That's right. There you go. And then the weekend events, we've got a 1.5 XP next weekend. Times two crew, times four XP weekend, times two. So nothing in there that is like looks like sales or stuff, but they could always tack stuff on. Well, it's D-Day as well, isn't it? 6th of June, so... There, oh, there right, right. Stuff. There's no mention there's of any of that. Yeah, no, so. there's, there's a little bit of a blurb at the beginning of this. Summer gets into full swing. June features D-Day-themed tank rewards. Okay. So maybe there'll be another D-Day event of some kind in there. Yeah, that'd be okay. All right. That's a sneak preview. Hey, oh, did you see the uh, fair play update? Cheaters get banned. Yeah. yeah, I think that's amazing. I really do. I think no, it's not amazing that they're doing it. It's amazing that they're actually telling us now that they're doing it, which is great because previously yeah. they've sort of said, yeah, we deal with that. But now they're actually giving us, if not examples, they're giving us the essay on it. They're going, yeah, this is what we're doing. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, X amount of being banned. Imagine with the way that they do it. I'm assuming they probably have to have some pretty dang good evidence that you did this. Yes. Yeah. And 151 yeah. people were unclever enough to get caught. 
that's well that's crazy. you know the bottom line is credo if you're a cheater you're probably i'm not going to denigrate anybody but if you're a cheater except for cheaters you don't have the wherewithal to <laughs> yeah not get caught you know what i mean if you if you're if that's your mindset <laughs> i don't want to denigrate that's, anyone but cheaters are donkeys yeah they are donkeys yeah they are absolutely they spoil the game they, they just ruin it get off go away <laughs> I think this is worth talking about a little bit because there was a guy that came to the forum and complained and was in that one, that forum post got deleted because you're not allowed to talk about bans. But for the, you know, two hours it was there before the mods caught it, he was complaining about how it was a false positive. And, you know, you got to take that for what it's worth, which is not, yeah. a, not a whole bunch. But this is the reason I'm going to talk about this right now is it is the very reason, <coughs> one of the very reasons why I don't use mods. And as much as I, I like the game and I enjoy, especially the Wargaming NA folks, one of the issues I have with Wargaming is so much of what they do is arbitrary and capricious. And in regards to mods and the rules and what's legal and what's not, it's really hard. It's really hard yeah. to sift through that. And they have the mod hub. And in theory, yeah. anything I grab off the mod, mod hub, I should be safe with. The problem with that theory is if they say you cheated... They say you cheated, you don't have any recourse. And you can yep. say, well, I got it off the mod hub. Well, there's already been several instances where Aslens, and I don't want to, like you said, I don't want to denigrate. Let me say this. I already said the name, unfortunately. But there have been several instances where mod packs have, by probably mistake more than likely, included yeah. older mods that were changed into illegal. So that's the other problem is because it's yeah. arbitrary and capricious, they just randomly decide what's not no longer allowed to be in there. And if the mod maker doesn't remove that or doesn't know, or it, there's so many ways yeah, for that yeah, safety yeah. chain to break, it simply isn't yeah. worth it. No. It just, it isn't. I mean, no, it's not. I mean, it, um, the, there are a, a, a number of mod makers out there that include other mod makers mods in their own packages. Sure. So, you know, there, there, there is the rub, because how do you yeah. know that those mods are not? Well, do you if know you're, what I mean? You'd have to go through the whole thing, wouldn't you? Yeah, and if you remember a year ago, we, I, I did several things on this, when Skill found the mod that was actually affecting other yeah. players because of what was yeah. called a mistake. And I said, yeah. what that does is it proves capability on, yeah. on mod makers to actually affect other people's games in a roundabout yeah. way. And, and this one was apparently by mistake, but I don't know. I think that's what I, my advice would be: if if you want quality of life mods, things in the garage, I can't imagine there's a single garage mod that could be that could affect gameplay. So if you want a pretty garage, or you want different characters, you want uh, fourteen rows of tanks, what you know, whatever you're doing, you want all kinds oh, yeah. of stat mods. What I think you're rolling the dice a lot is anything that changes. Gameplay. gameplay and yeah, I would yeah. include things like zoom out mods and some of these yeah. other things there's a couple auto aim mods that apparently are still kind of legal I guess that are sort of I, I haven't done mods for a while so I so I'm only going off of what I heard but so let me just talk about what I know here if it is cosmetic quality yeah. of life yeah. then I would say go for it if you are yeah, modding yeah, if you were modding the way the game plays in the game, I would be very, yeah. very careful with that. Even I, mean, if... I, will, I will admit that I, I, I had the zoom out mod. <clears throat> yeah. um, and that does give you, to be fair, it gives you a distinct advantage over the enemy player because you can right. zoom right out. Yeah. You can see which way his barrel's pointing, Yeah. you know, behind cover yep. and things like that. So you know, and you, it, it, to be fair, that that's one of the mods that is legal, but what I would suggest gives you a distinct advantage over your enemy. And that's important absolutely. to say for everyone who's listening, it is legal right now. So It is legal, yeah. No, don't absolutely. get me wrong. I'm not telling you you're running an illegal mod. What, what, and I would agree with Pilgrim on this 100%. It is uh, definitely an advantage, 100% an advantage oh, yeah. over somebody who doesn't have it. Whether it's big enough advantage to be banned, clearly not in Wargaming's eyes right now, is another question entirely. But it's a good example because if next week they go, oh, zoom out mods are now illegal, yeah. Now you've got an illegal mod. I, I assume they give you a grace period, but that's what I'm talking about. It's hard yeah, to know. Yeah, you and don't if, know, do you? And that's if you're a casual problem. player who doesn't pay attention to that crap, how, how are you going to know anyway? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
Good talk, Rusty. Good talk. Uh, let's see. Stage four frontline over today, right? Yeah. Or does oh, it? Or gosh, does it? That was do you know what? I'm never doing frontline again. Now I did and it. I'll, you're I'll, never I'll, doing it again know. until next year. Never, never again, ever until they bring another reward tank out. No, right, never, right. ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I have just this this year. I, I did it because I wanted the the, the chart. I, but I did it on the EU account. I didn't do it on the NA account. I have no frontline on my NA account done whatsoever. But I did it on the EU account, and I managed to complete it last night at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, that is it. I am done. I've got the tank, and I can't do this anymore. You must have been cross-eyed by the time that was over. Uh, God, it was like... Holy, which tank? I had, to get from, I had to get from level 10 to 15 to get the final token Ooh, in one, and one, in one evening yeah, oh, one, one wow. evening and like i was just completely because it's not like that's a, it's not like that's actually two-thirds of the way <laughs> right because of because of the progression of points <laughs> to, level 10 was like one like what two fifths well, or one or you know yeah, what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. three eighths so or I, something all i wanted was enough tokens to get the chart so i've got it now but All I right. haven't got it on the NA account, so I can't use it on the NA account. Speaking of the char, I'm going to make a bold what? statement. And people already disagree with me. I know the CCs disagree, me with, uh, disagree with me on this, and I've said it multiple times, and I'll say it again. It is overpowered. What? It is 100%. You know, just let's wait and see what the numbers do, and if I'm wrong, I'll eat crow. But I don't think... I'm going to brag on myself. I don't think I've been wrong about any tanks that I've said something like that on. Okay. So, uh, so there you go. But I think the reason is it's very mobile and it's running around with four 390 alpha strikes. And the counter is always, oh, yeah, but it's got a really long intra clip. Like, that doesn't matter. The game's not played that, that, the game's not played yeah. that way. It rolls up and it's got four 390 alpha strikes. That means it can take out a tier eight heavy yeah. you know yeah. what i'm saying it can it can delete yeah. a tier eight heavy. Yeah, yeah absolutely um we'll it, see it's quite interesting to watch chat on the eu server when somebody put this is fantastic i'm knocking around in an op tank i bet all you guys are totally pissed off <laughs> when they're so driving cool. chars yeah yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. Like, so you're gonna get a lot of I'm going to get pushed back down below. There's going to be somebody that's going to say it's not overpowered, and they're going to say some bollocks about the intra clip, and they're completely yeah. wrong. I overperformed in that tank by a thousand miles. I had 71 battles in it, 71% win rate or whatever it was. I mean, just the thing is ridiculous. And what's interesting is while my DPG, this is a good discussion, while my DPG wasn't that much higher than other tier 9 tanks, the, the, the thing with a tank like that is if you can get yourself mid and especially late game, it's an absolute assassin on taking yeah. people down. Yeah, yeah. And, and that is a force multiplier on winning games, even yeah. if you're not doing. Because the reason it's not going to probably have a huge DPG is early on you're not able to just rush out and just start blapping people because you'll, you'll get deleted. But if you play it yeah. carefully, and this is very similar to the, to the British light tanks late game, why they carry high win rates but have mediocre to to average dpgs it's it's yeah. the capability late game to clean up games and win the close ones yeah. that's yeah. that's what a tank like this has and that's what people don't understand like oh it's dpg is average it's not overpowered eh. actually no watch its win rate and it's and it's win eights and it's not like the, a, a light tank like the 1357 which has similar capabilities it's not like that because it's got armor it's a medium tank so it will take Every now and again, its turret will do it will do the thing. But the thirteen fifty seven is a great example because it does the same thing. Late game, you get that thing into a late game. It's why it carries such a good win rate. It's got no armor. What has it got? It's got stealth, and if you keep it alive with that with that pew pew auto loader, and you're assassinating things late game, that's where the win rate comes in. Yeah, yeah, so. no, absolutely. Be interesting to see the outcome. Yeah, and if I'm wrong, I'll admit it. We'll see. But I think uh, you're going to see in the next six months or so, there's going to be some serious complaints about it. Of the three things, I think the AE Phase 1 is slightly overpowered. It's good, I wouldn't say, but it's a heavy, so it's limited in its mobility, which in this game is what limits things' yeah. overpoweredness, uh, unless they're just ridiculous like the 279E. Uh, the 777 is probably one of the worst. 
Russian heavies? Well, now, I, I know you've said this. Can I can I beg to differ on this? I'm not okay. on about the I'm not on about the actual gameplay of the tank, and I get it. It's about it's it's a bit like the 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 T10. It's a it's a fat, it's a medium heavy ish. Yeah. I get it, but it is low. It is very low. Yeah. It is no higher than what a T54, something like that. Yeah, you can yeah. get that into hull down positions, and it's got fairly decent turret armor. Yeah, uh, you know it, that that is its play style. It, given that it's not, it's one of those tanks where you go, well, actually, it's not as good as all the rest of its class, but it doesn't have to be because it's got a different play style. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. I mean, as That's a comes yeah, out. as a backup to a to a medium wolf pack, it could be vicious. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Good stuff there. So yeah, the front line is ending. Fair play. I think that's pretty much it. I'm gonna jump over to the UI then, Pilgrim. Let's see what we got going on there ambitions wise. And there's the conqueror I'm so terrible at. Oh, the uh, just quick mention. It's worth watching the video for the conqueror 277, the thing that was connected to the battle pass. The final one's actually pretty good. There's some pretty funny lines in that. I, I think they're catching their stride on that one, man. What I will say, the bridge? The bridge, is it that it's the film called The Bridge? Yeah, The Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what I will say is the the voice acting is a little bit iffy. <laughs> uh, it, clearly, it's translated because I'm assuming that the original is probably in Russian. I guess with the actors, um, although the other one guy looks Brit, so I'm not sure if he actually is a Brit. Okay. But the the voice acting is kind of funny. They have that one Let guy with the very me. serious voice that they do all their videos with. Uh, you mean like Mary Poppins and Dick Van Dyke? That that sort of yeah, Cockney yeah. accent. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right, mate. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Frontline missions. We have anniversary missions during the breather. Those are still ongoing. Those are to get your tickets. Get your fun ticket. Tournament missions. Heavy tank. Multipliers for on now. These are really anything to, to look at here. Watt salute, light tank courses, community hunting. You know, I used to get into these and break them down, but they're really kind of they're almost always the same now, which is very interesting. Yeah. I, I find this mission tab to be almost useless a lot of times anymore. I, I find myself over in the daily tab more in the battle pass. Yeah, tab I do. More. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't realize Starry Night was still going, but it goes to the 11th, so it's got a little bit longer. Oh, that was. Uh, that was the Twitch package that was extended to the 11th for the Starry Night thing. And then we got Daily. I always like to do this. We're going to see, do we have any, do I have any, oh, there we go. We're going to re-roll this vehicle fragment one. So let's see if we get more vehicle fragments. It's always fun. I got one for 25 bonds, too, on my Daily. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, oh, there you go. 25 I rerolled bonds to ten thousand credits. Fantastic! Oh, all right. that's all right. If I can get to some games today. All right, cool. And that is that. So now let us move on to subjects du jour. <laughs> we had a very, we just had a very serious conversation. So now we're going to have our serious faces on. But you know what? Let's not do that. Let's have. Let's talk about equipment two point mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Here it comes. Um, <clears throat> I you know I know they were talking about it. it. It's it's interesting to me that we got we've got data and a a super test is it or is it sand, sandbox? We've got a sandbox. sandbox for equipment 2.0, but we don't have anything for crew 2.0. I thought that was interesting actually. Yeah, that's something I didn't pick up on. But yes, well, I mean, yeah, that wasn't the crew thing the the big thing they were working on. Yeah. So there sandbox, are... is, sandbox is is sandbox, isn't it? It's not it's not it's not set in concrete. It's just playing True. it out there to right. you, just to see what the impact is on the game. Now, one of the things that makes me laugh about that is that they 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 said in the blurb for the equipment 2.0, we're putting it into sandbox to get some real time uh, data back from. What is normal gameplay? Well, I'm sorry, know, you don't have normal gameplay in sandbox. <laughs> Everybody loads up premium or special ammunition. Everybody's got a 15 skill crew or 11 skill crew, etc., etc., etc. I mean, it's not real. It's not real. The data they get from that is not real. Okay. I, I hope, uh, and we've talked about this before, and I talk about it a lot. I hope that, not hope, they have to understand that. I hope 
<laughs> you know, you know what I mean? It's they don't have yeah. any other choice. There's no other place to test it, so they have to have a testing server. Absolutely. You can't yeah. just be a nihilist, nihilist, and come out and go. Testing servers are stupid. Why do you even use them? But at the same time, what you just said is completely valid. Be very careful what you take away from a test server, for yeah. the very reason you said that it's. And then when you say things like, "We wanted to get," you know, I think what he actually said was something like, "Close to, close to re real yeah. gameplay or some such yeah. thing." But yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, so the changes are interesting because. Somebody mentioned this, and I actually became kind of a fan of it, actually, of limiting the amount of equipment you can have in lower tiers to try to dissuade a little bit of the seal clubbing so that nice. you, the seal clubbers don't have such a huge advantage. And it looks like they've tried to do that a little bit. And I, I applaud that. I hope, I, I hope there are tears coming out of some seal clubbers' eyes right now from this. I hope so. I really do. That was a great pile of words. I love that. And no tears, tears. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just God, how clever am I? I'm the cleverest. Here. <laughs> yeah. I'll, totally I'll, meant to I'll, do I totally I'll, meant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, here we go. Yeah, well done, Great. <laughs> I have some good writers, man. I have some good writers. Thanks. Good job, guys. Oh, hmm. that's, that's the dog. Is that Mocha? She yeah, that's, that's the dog. Yeah, she looked at me like <laughs> She's probably like, that guy never shuts up. <laughs> I've got to refresh my tea. I need something to keep me going here. Yeah, <laughs> was that a, that's a backhanded insult right there. Um, yeah. So tears, <laughs> tears for the lower tier <laughs> seal lower clubbers. Tiers. And I'm not talking to no, guy. I think that's a good point. You, yeah. No, actually, yeah. Um, seriously, it is a great idea. The other thing you need to look at with seal clubbing, of course, is crew skills. Yeah. So not only just a crew, you've got a, if you've got a crew on your on your seal clubbing tank and it's got five or six skills on it. Wow. Well, since that mechanic is in there for for the equipment, you, you kind of have to assume uh, you know how that goes. But <laughs> yeah. I'd imagine something similar is going to happen tier wise for crews as well. That would be my guess. I mean, if you're going to go that far and go, hey, we want to limit seal clubbing, so one of the ways to do it is to kind of ease people into it. Then it, it feels like your your crew skills may be limited at lower tiers as well to keep it on a more even footing. Yeah, because it is a sliding it's a sliding um, scale of slots. So tier one doesn't get any slots, and as you go up to tier four, you will get. And it accelerates pretty quick because I think by five or six, from what I remember, it, it's pretty much full up. At least by yeah. by six, it's pretty much full up. So, and I, I agree with that because I actually like to play five once in a while. I don't do it much, but tier six and above, I like all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't yeah, have any yeah. problem with any with whoever wants to go hang out at tier six, whatever. You're not really seal clubbing at tier six, although some people would argue you are, depending how good you are. But well, and you've got the T the T thirty four eight five. I love going and playing yeah. with that. I mean, you know, I mean, I've been trying to get I've got trying to get the hundred battles done on yeah. that particular one. But, but I think the the real seal clubbing argument is the tier two three jerks who are down there just thumping new yeah. people over and over and over again. I ran into a guy yesterday. With 150,000 battles. That's a lot. Now, that is a lot. I realize that coming from the guy who has 80, that's, you know, kind of... It's a lot of stretch to get to 150. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just have to play twice as much as I have, which makes my mind go, what? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I'm already ridiculously uh, overplaying the game. All right, what else is going on with the 2.0? Um they have increased variety. I will give them that. There are a lot of different stuff. You mentioned in it before we started, there's one that increases hit points. Yeah, absolutely. You've got a piece of equipment. I can't remember what it was called because it, I just skipped over it, but it said uh, it will increase your hit points. So I, uh, by, by a small percentage, by like 25 or something like that. But the so, example I think they gave was the mouse, and it added 150. That's right. That's right. Oh, uh, okay, 150. Yeah. Okay. So I assume it scales depending on the tier or whatever, but at a, on a 3,000 hit point tank, it added 150. So, uh, you know, that could be the difference. It, it, obviously, it's... That could be the difference, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you're down to minimum hit points sure. and you've, you've still got that in, in, your, in your locker, yeah. And they've rearranged the prices so that the equipment for the, the lower levels cost less. That brings up another forum post that I saw where somebody was being very irritated that all the money he had spent on low tier equipment is not going to be compensated for. And I got to be honest, I just don't care. 
to be, to be, and also, if you look at it this way, if you bought a optics at a hundred thousand credits, you've had the use of that for all this time. Yeah. So you've not actually been done out of anything because you've had the use of that optics for if you've been playing the game for three years or five years. So the, now that they bring it in and it's cheaper for the lower tiers, it makes no impact to you. You've had your money's worth out of it already. Yeah, and and what's going to happen, Pilgrim? What's going to happen? As this gets well, the, Yeah. No, well, no, as it gets closer, what are people going to do? Oh, well, they'll start buying it up, won't they? No, well, they're going to sell the ones they have and then sorry. rebuy them for cheaper. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. yeah. Because they can't work on higher tiers. Russian. Because they're class, that's right, because they're classed, aren't they? They're class one, class two. Well, see, yeah. but if I'm if I have a bunch of low tier tanks that have that are going to have much cheaper equipment, say yeah, I've yeah. got three pieces of equipment on a tier two tank. Yeah. <clears throat> one option is to just take it off, and that that equipment is probably going to be turned into something else, which may be useful at a higher tier. But unless you have the full gamut of how each piece of equipment is going to be changed, if if it's a piece of equipment that that tier can use, because at tier two or whatever, there's one piece or whatever it is. Say it's a gun rammer. You've got a gun rammer on your tier two, and yeah. it costs you know the the I want to say the small ones are two hundred thousand down at that tier, yeah. and yeah. the new one's going to cost fifty. Yeah. Then you're going to sell that one for half for a hundred, and you're going to rebuy, and you've made fifty thousand. You've got to do the math for all those things. But the other two yeah, pieces just, of equipment yeah. may not be useful at tier two anymore. Now, if they are useful on a different tier two, because depending on the, the type of tank, it can be different equipment, yeah, yeah, yeah. it may yeah. also get downgraded. So yeah. you may be able to do the refund on that. Or if it's not useful at all, say it's binoculars. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if there's going to be classes on binoculars. I don't remember that. It may get shifted to a different tier piece of equipment. There's a lot of moving parts in there. Uh, no, what they about things like binox is they won't be available for lower tiers. Hmm. So if you've got Binox on your lower tiers, you're going to you have go. a lot so, of Binox. In so your, bad in, example. In your, in your Napa, you? But I think if if you looked at all your lower tier stuff and you had a bunch of equipment on, I, I happen to because I, I just buy equipment for everything because I don't like moving it. I have a ridiculous amount of equipment and 500 tanks. If you just took, <laughs> if you just took, you know, tier X, whatever it is, and you know every piece of equipment below that's going to be less, you could probably sell every piece of equipment, rebuy the few pieces that that go on those tanks, and make a, a killing I make a lot of credits yeah, yeah. I, I i clicked when you were saying it earlier on i just i was just like, they had that before didn't they the, um i can't remember what it was there was something that went off on hey, it's old man stuff i can't remember but i do know that <laughs> yeah i do know that there was this this whole thing about selling stuff and rebuying it and it all sort of kicked off with lots of people making lots of credits so yeah, the russian the russian refund i what i would watch for is that That's that weekend will be a 50% equipment sale, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> Just, again, yeah. It's in the sandbox, so who knows? Yeah. Who knows where it's going? So lots of different equipment, uh, limited variability of equipment for a vehicle class. That's the one part I don't particularly care for, and I've, I've mentioned this multiple, multiple times. Once again, they're, they're talking about, you know, they're, they're hard sold on this idea of a tank's role. I mean, they, they really are put, this is something they believe in clearly. Everything they, they seem to do with balance and with new modes and things are constantly talking about the role of the tank and blah, blah, yeah. blah. So they're, they're trying. I mean, we've been there before with that, haven't we? We've, because they dictate, they, they want to dictate what the role of that tank is, but we as players will make the role of that tank whatever we want it to make. Right. You know, you yeah. know, players. Who, who's going to tell me that that heavy can't go and scout? I've yeah. had some good scout gets in heavies. Players will figure out, uh, you know, how it works according to the meta. Yeah. They have to have a plan. It's I'm not again. I'm not nihilistic about. Oh, yeah. they should never do that. I. They do need to plan and try to set their game up the way they want to. But I feel like they over rely on this a little bit. So we're going to get some interesting choices by them on which equipment you're able to put on what tank, in what yeah, class. Yeah. That's going to change yeah. a lot, and it will add variety for sure. Eventually, the, the meta build will come forward, whatever that meta build is. People will figure it out. It can't help but happen. You know, People will figure out what the best build is. But there, there should be kind of an interesting phase there where we all try to figure out different things. And maybe maybe it creates more options where you can make a, a stealth build or a speed build or a 
damage build. But you could sort of do that now, and really the build that matters is damage build or vision, and that that's it. Those are the those yeah. are the builds. You can you can certainly you can play around with directives and all the rest of it, but yeah, the basic tenets of it is mm -hmm. that you can you can as you said you can make a damage build or you can make a spotting build right. just by which equipment you put on, and then of course you've got you've got the gun laying drive, which yeah. I mean, people prioritize damage and vision, so, and sometimes it's kind of both. It's a couple damp, like a vert stab and a rammer and, a, and optics on mediums. That's kind of if you can do that, that's what people do. And they have said, Wargaming have said in in the blurb that goes with this is that they've actually looked at the data of what players do choose in the way of equipment. Yeah. So I guess there's some science behind it. They are working it out and trying to get it right. I guess. So here's their categories: firepower, survivability, mobility, scouting. Firepower, no brainer. That's going to be popular. Yeah. Survivability, I think the bonuses are going to be so low, nobody's going to care. Nobody cares anyway right now. So we'll see. I, I, I'm not sure how that how they're going to entice people to put equipment on for survivability over firepower, mobility, or scouting. Mobility, again, is close to survivability. If, if a tank's mobile, it's mobile. There's a certain point where it doesn't matter too much. There's a certain point where it matters too much. That's the EBRs. So there's another between 40 and, and 50, 60 kilometers an hour where it, there's not a big difference uh, in a lot of that. So I, I again, I don't know about how good mobility could be to be really applicable. Then there's the scouting, which is the vision piece. So yeah. I think the, the, the ones that win there right off the bat, just knowing the way the game's played is firepower and, and scouting or vision. You see, that's interesting because they're, they're looking at, when they're talking about survivability, they're looking at the spall liners. They, they were saying, you could, you know, that's part of what they consider to be survivability is sticking the spall liner. Now, I've never put a spall liner on. I'm, I'm sure many people do. But I've never used it because I prefer some of the other options. I don't want a spall liner because it takes up a slot. Super heavies. That, that I mean, yeah, well, yeah, super yeah. heavies. And I mean, I suppose if it Im improves the survivability of super heavies, but now you're yeah. just talking about one certain... One class, small, small class of, yeah, 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 and one one yeah. subset of one class, not just heavies, yeah. but super yeah. heavies. Yeah. I didn't notice that they had changed the percentage on stuff. They've actually increased the bonus. That is interesting. The stabilizers yeah. at twenty seven point five, innovative load of loading systems at thirteen point five. So that's yeah. improved in bounty equipment. Well, that's what I'm going to say because you've also got this other class of equipment. Oh, wait a minute. Bounty. It. They're in. Oh, <laughs> I hate this immediately. <laughs> I hate this immediately. That, that we're getting into the weeds. We're digging down into. I it, hate yeah. this without even with prejudice, without even thinking about it. it improved in bounty. These are the 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 purple equipment is being yeah, is yeah. being boosted. Are you actually yeah. effing kidding me? You cannot be serious. That's it, it's that's not unbelievable. really available for everybody to get either. It's, wow. it's not like it's not like in normal equipment. You have to do particular special things to get this equipment. Holy <laughs> cow! So, that is such a terrible, terrible idea. I was wow. going to try and pull up the website and look at it, but it's probably too long for me to dig into it at the moment. No, it's it's pretty short. I'm I'm not too far down. Wow. Okay, I don't like that. I, I'm gonna to have to have a think. It just it's, the snap judgment is that's garbage, um, but yeah. I'll we'll see. I can be swayed, but okay. I don't think how something to something to uh, something to look into. I guess. Yeah, I don't know how I would be. There is a list then towards the bottom of it, or the mid part of it. This is a very long article. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. That breaks down the different equipment. So firepower has vents, GLD. There's a new thing called improved aiming unit. Yeah. which decreases the aiming circle as opposed to increasing the speed. Right, the, and if you the, hover over the word cost, it'll give you the breakdown for the three different classes. Ah, they're very good. Cost. Good catch, good catch. So there it is. The class is more or less in line with tiering, but at, yeah. from what I understood on the video, it's not a perfect tier one through three or class one. It, it kind of moves a little bit depending on the on the tank class as well. Um, improve, improved vents. So these are just the improved. Wait a minute. Why? Improved. That's the green. That's the purple stuff, right? Or 
Well, and now I'm starting to think about this because looking at it, it almost seems to be just the normal kit. It doesn't seem to say it's the bonus kit. Oh, That's right. improved and bounty equipment will provide a static bonus no matter what slot they're in and won't be assigned to any of the four categories. In addition, improved equipment will grant bigger bonuses than it currently does. Yeah. So improved equipment will so, grant bigger bonuses than it currently does. It will, but when you go down to the thing that says firepower, isn't I think the name of ventil there's already something called improved ventilation, right? It's, that's not the actual yes. improved oh, yeah. piece yeah. of equipment. I'm very confused on that. Because it's enhanced gun line drive, improved ventilation. I don't think this vent is the is a, is a is improved or bounty equipment vent. This just is a standard it's a vent standard, called. It's a standard vent. Yeah, it's a standard vent. <laughs> oh, why would into that? Why would they just call it ventilation? That I may be missing something there. Someone will fix us down in the comments more than likely. They but do. they have in, improved. They have changed the percentage. They have across the board increased the percentage. Yeah, they've upped the percentage, haven't they? For nearly everything. Plus 25% to accuracy on whole traverse. Isn't that interesting? Gun traverse, yeah. plus 30% to turret traverse yeah. speed. Yeah, that's got up 10%. So gun traverse amplifier is going to speed up turret traverse speed. I wonder if the second number, is the second number, if it's purple or something? I don't know what that is doing. Yeah. It, uh... It's not. Yeah, current bonus, new bonus is above that. So, uh, so survivability won't worry about the two. We've got vehicle durability. We've got module durability. Nobody's gonna. Nobody is gonna put module durability on anything. That's useless. Nobody gives two craps about that. No. What ammo rack? Nobody's gonna use that. Doesn't matter. Even with a, a mega percentage, ammo racks aren't. Ammo racks simply don't happen enough for anyone to even want a wet ammo rack. What? Why would improving the ammo rack make people, anybody want to put on it? Because that's not the point. Right. And you would be fitting wet ammo racks all day long, wouldn't you? If it yeah. was, a, if it was a, I mean, I've had it happen. It's quite spectacular when it happens to my tank. Yeah. But yeah, it's not something I would go to and fit because I, I need the slots for things that I my playstyle says I need. You know. So they kept fill tanks with CO two, which nobody uses. They improved it, but who cares? Once again, the same point. It just simply doesn't matter. Filters, I don't know. It is, I don't know. I don't know if anybody uses filters. A lot of these things are useless. The thing is, unless you actually, unless you actually, I mean, this is this thing about some players will delve into this and really <laughs> research what it benefits there are. Because I personally, I couldn't tell you what all the benefits are for all the pieces of equipment. I just know that the pieces of equipment that I get from the NA server people talking. Yeah. I go, oh, okay, okay, I'll fit that because that's what everybody else is fitting. Oh, well, it's you because know, it's the, like, the priority oh, is okay. shooting. The priority is yeah, yeah. just shooting. That's the priority. Yeah. And yeah. if I run out of stuff that helps me shoot better, then I do yeah. some vision. That's the priority. Yeah. And if I if I am prioritizing vision, then I do vision, then I add shooting. That's, that's all that matters. Vision and shooting. No, yeah. None of none thing else really matters in well, the game. I'm not bothered that an engine fire chance, a greater chance of an engine fire if I don't have a filter fitted because that's why I've got fire extinguishers fitted. Right. Do you no, know what I mean? Yeah. No, people will put food on the tank and just accept the fire just so exactly. they can shoot better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They won't put a filter on because it decreases the chance of a fire. No, I, I, unless, I don't know. Some of these are completely useless and just increasing the percentage doesn't make them any more useless in your meta. So I think there's a, a real uh, lack of understanding up here. Improved tank helmets. This is interesting on the surface, but I don't think I would use it. It, it decreases the stun duration and the stun effect. I, stunning's annoying. Um, I have a I have a, a med kit that regens. If I get stunned and I, and I need to fight, I kick the, the med kit off. Yeah. This doesn't matter. I don't why I mean, would what I... you said before, the, the point is exactly what you said before, is that you will set up your tank in your play style the way you want to play that tank. And, and if it's a shooter, then it's yeah. only going to have things to shoot. You're not going to go to that and deny yourself a slot by sticking a helmet. Now, the way they're going to force you to use some of these things is they're going to give you slots that are only for one of these uh, things. Of they are, yeah. Right? And you're going, to have to, you're going to have to pick one of them, the, what, the one that's best for what you're building. So, okay, maybe I retract a little bit of what I said in that 
nobody will use them. You may be forced to use a survivability use module because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what it is and you can't put anything yeah. else there. I don't know though, all the ins and outs because I think like it said on the improved stuff, there's some equipment you can put in any any slot you want, yeah, yeah. but you don't get an advantage. There's It's kind of interesting. Anyway, so there's that stuff going on. We've got mobility wise, uh, whole traverse speed. We've got a transmission that increases the speed of changing direction. Incre oh my gosh. Wheeled vehicles increases the speed of changing direction when in motion. Wow, that's <laughs> like they need it. <laughs> Please, War Gaming, stop smoking the crack. That's <laughs> unbelievable. Like they need it. They need mm. another, what is it, math in public, 5.5% increase in their ability to change direction because <laughs> they are so immobile. Does that does that mean from forward to, to back or or this? Change direction when in motion for two vehicles. I'm assuming it's no, turning, be, basically, right? Turning. It'll be if you've got your wheels, is it wheels up when they're more maneuverable? Or wheels down, I can't remember, but whichever the, the, the setting is where you have more maneuverability but less speed, that is gonna apt I mean I've watched wheelies do flips in midair and turn round and then land opposite way round. You yeah. know. It's just, it's just ow. Wow. Oh yeah, there you go. Plus six percent to top speed. Give that to wheeled tanks. Plus fifteen percent to en to engine power. Give that to wheeled tanks. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> Improved onboard gearboxes. Increases the speed of hull traverse about its axis. Wheeled tip. Well, at least the track vehicles get a better. That's crazy. All right, scouting. Yeah. Vents, camouflage nets. Telescopes, optics, all standard. Oh, look at this. Low noise exhaust system, plus six to say, that's new, isn't it? Huh. Improved radio set, plus two seconds to the time which enemy vehicles remain spotted. Can, okay. I, can I ask a question, Guido? Yeah. Low noise exhaust system. Is that a thing? Is that, uh, Do we hear scouts in bushes? <laughs> do we, I mean, do we? No. Do, no, we, do no. we identify a scout by the... We can hear its engine. I don't think you... Well, I yeah, I guess. What's, what's I guess if you have your – there, like Skill has a video on it, and I think Des or someone else, maybe even True, but there is a distance at which you hear stuff. Well, and maybe you can hear stuff idling in bushes. I have no idea. Okay, okay that's interesting. That's that would be interesting. But I think that's a very limited, uh, a very limited it thing. It says increases vehicle concealment. So that will be a soft stat that Wargaming have that – I would assume that you know it's part of the whole mechanism. Of well, it's it, it, if they take into account if they're taking the the engine noise into account, it's baked into the concealment on the vehicle. I'd say. Okay. Then there's the idea of the game of the game itself and the environment of actually I have my headsets Here. on and I hear something in a bush. I don't know if that happens. I I assume okay. so. Okay. If you can hear stuff get knocked down, but I don't know if you hear enemy tanks that okay. are not spotted. So maybe somebody no. knows. That's interesting. No idea. Okay. Uh, radio set, experimental powder. Oh, look at that. Extra concealment after firing, so you lose less. You lose less camo when you when you fire. Interesting. Okay. Panoramic triplex. Plus the concealment of moving enemy vehicles. Oh. Oh wow. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So decreasing scouts or any other vehicles moving. Camo, yeah. Commander's vision. Wow, there's a that. These are interesting because wow. these could be very. I won't say game changing, but they could have a, a, a definite effect on the game because of the vision shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. Commander's so, vision system will burn through a, a ten percent more. Yes. Of uh, enemy vehicles behind foliage, so the, going yeah. dark behind that bush is not a guarantee. So the question is how many of these view. you could carry on a scout. So you have a tier 10 scout. How many how many of these vision things can you use? Because you could really build a, a, a pretty powerful spotting. And that's, look, that's a problem actually because we already have vision saturation at tier 10 yeah. with just the stuff we have. If you're going to make the tier 10 mediums and lights have even more vision saturation, that's idiotic. Yeah, I don't think you can put all that in there without changing your vision system. And knocking down some of the view ranges on the tanks. This I don't think this is a great idea. 
you are going to lock down even more places where people can't cross early game because they're going to get shredded. Well, you, you, the typical example of that is mines. You can't cross on mines from right flank to left flank it, uh, as a tier 10. I mean, they put yeah. tier 10s in mines. You can't cross from right to left flank or left to right flank without being spotted. You can't. The map's too small. Yeah. You know, most, most of the tier 10 um, vehicles that can uh, the users spot us are going to burn right the way through to the opposite side of the map. I mean, for wheeled tanks, never mind the mobility things. Add a bunch of extra spotting to them. That's that's what they yeah. need, right? They need to see for yeah. even further. <laughs> Just to them a little bit more. <laughs> I'm going to make my wheel tank faster and spot more. That'd be great. But Dimitri said they're going to nerf them. <laughs> well, that, yeah. Well, that may be on top of everything else too. So maybe that comes in and, and mitigates some of that a little bit. So it's got the list of all the new. Oh, and the, so if you go further down, it's got the list of new equipment and what. Okay, so it gives a good idea of what tier and what types of vehicles. So, for example, on the first one, additional forward transmission is all tier 8 to 10 vehicles. So there are some limitations on things that they can be put on. There's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of writing and talking about what the best builds are if they do something like this. It, it will certainly... It would be interesting to get people's opinions on that, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll, it will certainly give us a lot to talk about as it, uh, as it happens. Then it's got costs... Associating equipment with vehicle types. It's got a list of those. Uh, conversion can. Oh, there are. Oh, there is some verbiage about the conversion on what old equipment. So I'll I'll dig into that later. Won't dig into that now. Interface. There were some inter interface improvements they talked about. All right, that's enough of that. Holy cow, that was quite a bit. And, uh, it's a big package, and obviously being on sandbox, there'll be changes anyway. But yeah, yeah interesting. All right, so I'm going to, we'll talk, last thing we'll talk about here, just real quickly, there are some map changes coming up in the super test for Ruinberg, Proc, and Cliff. For Ruinberg, they're changed, you know the little nook that everyone drives to in the middle road? That's easy to get to from the north and is, is relatively overpowered for them. And then they, they made that little nook in the north part of it for the south team, but nobody really goes there because it's not very survivable or useful. They've widened both of those out into what looks like you can have a little mini, a little mini standoff between those two points. I don't know, I don't know how useful that is. Uh, yeah, well, I guess. I mean, you also you've got line of sight down there as well, haven't you? So yeah, that, that, it's an interesting position. So yeah. at least the south side, it looks like, should be able to get into their north nook and be a little more effective on countering the south nook. The problem is okay. they haven't changed the shape of the road. And the angle of it, so the South's going to have an advantage dealing with the North guys, field guys. I, I don't oh, know. that'd be interesting, right? Yeah. Okay, because there's, there's that little spot at the top. You can hide behind the rubble next yeah. to the building, can't you? But we'll and see. That's an interesting idea. The other thing they've changed is over in the north part of the city brawl, the big cathedral that was sitting there. They've broken that up and changed quite a few things in that. So they've also given a a window nook in the north. That the south used to have that window nook that could shoot guys in the corner of the of the church. They put some rubble there, and then they put a nook for the north side. So that's going to make that just a static TD brawl. Yeah, yeah. Pain in the ass, probably. But uh, if, I mean, if I'm in a TD on the map, that's my favorite place to go at the moment, uh, as long as I can see above the rubble. If you've got a low TD, you can't yeah. see above the rubble. Yeah. So it looks like they've done a lot to help the north side. The north side was typically a more defensive position. But it was hard to crack, so I, I sort of didn't have a problem with this map. I don't, I'm not really the one overpowered spot they fixed or tried to was up in the little village, on the north side buildings. There was that rubble pile and that nook, where if you come yeah. from the south, that's you, what I was talking about. yeah, you could yeah. lock yeah. down that, and then any any green or any enemy that were in the field who got too close in proxy that could get shredded by your guys from down below. Um, what they did is you have to look at the video to see it. They put some rubble so you can't get into the nook. And then they lowered the rubble pile. But as I looked at it, I said, I said well, that rubble pile is going to be fine for the damn Soviet mediums. There you it's, go. They're, they're fine. They're low enough. It's not going to matter. You try to put your yeah. Pershing or something there, your yeah. turret's sticking yeah. over the whole time, and yeah. maybe the top part of your hole. Yeah. So I, whatever. We'll see how that works. For Proc, two interesting things. They, they rearranged Guido's Hill a little bit, which irritates me. <laughs> with that little uh, depression you could get yeah into. they made it a little deeper but now it's a little steeper 
So, oh, okay. so I'm not sure it's quite as useful because, if, like I always said, if you had a hover medium or a low slung tank, you could come over and get down low enough pretty quickly and not get shot. Now, it's a deeper indentation, but it's a steeper climb. So I don't... I don't. I, and your gun depression is going to be affected. You haven't got, yeah. haven't got that gun depression. Yep. So I, I don't know. I don't know. That may, have, that may really hurt the south sides, and that may have been the intention, even though they're saying you can hide there now. Um, I don't think it's as useful for getting up and over and spotting, but we'll see. I don't, I don't know. The other one is over on the west side, that indentation, they call it the swampy area. That's to the east of the road. It's oh, lower, which in theory should make it more useful to people getting up there and spotting. It was not an easy place to use because guys up on the ridges could shoot down into it yeah, yeah. so easily. Yeah. It's deeper now, so in theory, you can use that a little bit more. And there were some huge changes on cliff. Really too many to go into, but I will say over on the, the west side, they've wick, re-wickered the approach, which they've done multiple times. It looks like maybe the north will be better able to to challenge that little center ramp thing and keep the oh, south okay. side. Well, that makes, that, that actually, that's fair mm -hmm. because it was always one-sided there. Unless you were in there early, right? it ended up being so one-sided because you were getting hit from both sides. Yeah. And they oh, did. They did three things. They they changed the approach so it's a little bit easier. They changed the nook to the north of the center um, hill or mountain thing, so that you could hide there better and not get shredded. And then they changed the the north side of the center brawling area and and, and gave a little indentation so you could go hold down and, and if they were poking over and shooting at you, you would not have to get shredded. So. They did a lot to help the north side, maybe too much. <laughs> okay, well, it'll bear out over the next couple yeah. of months. When, uh, when, is this, um, this is changes due on the sandbox or due? This is super. Uh, super tough. Let's see, Annabelle. I don't know. It just says map changes. There's no indication that I can okay. see. There's there's probably on one of the articles says which one it is. Okay. The, uh, the only other thing on Cliff is they added. They added a weird, and I don't. I couldn't figure out why. I read the I read the verbiage, but I didn't really understand it. There, there is a bush down in the southeast corner, looking at people that come around the mountain, coming around the mountain as they come. Yes, yeah, no, yeah. And they made it like a, a ledge cliff position, but it's only entered from the north side. I, I'm not really sure what the point of it is. Whether it's to give a, a better position for people moving south, and I think that might be it because when you moved north, you had some low. Some low ground where you could actually yeah, take yeah, on like low ground that went, well, went to, uh, around the hill, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and you could take on their guys in the backfield from that low ground pretty well. There wasn't really an equivalent capability if you're coming from the north to the south. So maybe that's why okay. they built that little ramp and a, a little perch where you could then start shooting into okay. their guys on the south side there. But there you go. Okay, interesting. All right. Well, I mean, I think that's it for the uh, the world of tank stuff, man. Well, you got anything else? I've got a couple of things if you if you if you if you want to um, bear with me. Yeah, yeah. As always, go get your I walker. Got a survey. I got, um, you've had these. I got a World Tank survey yesterday. Did you? I don't. Okay, I, I get I get them quite regularly. The, I, don't know, I must be of a demographic that the demographic that they want a survey. Yeah. So I did it yesterday. I clicked on the yes, I'll take the survey. The first question came up: How likely are you to recommend World of Tanks to friends? You know, one to ten, sliding scale. So I ticked the box for ten, and that was it. That was it. That was the survey. <laughs> I, was like, I was expecting another question. I was like, what, 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 what's that all about? What's the point? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. The spin, the spin on that, once the company looks at the numbers, they're like, oh, the game is perfect. <laughs> Yeah, we, we won't use any of your personal details, but Pilgrim would recommend it. <laughs> I guess you have to assume that there was some level at which, if you said lower than that, it had probably had a few more questions like out. Oh, like possibly, a, uh, yeah. Okay, that's a yeah, fair one. Yeah, like, and uh, just just as an aside, but can we go back to Frontline just for a second? Because mm -hmm. I actually got I got the highest score I ever got in Frontline. Really? I got I got seventeen. 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 So what? seventeen what? Seventeen wheelies killed. Yes, get in there. Wait, you kill. Hold on, you killed seventeen wheelies. Yes, over a period of time, not in. Oh, not in, oh, uh, oh. on this front line, not in one battle. <laughs> I wish. Oh yeah, dude, I was. I was <laughs> this week. 
over this week I've managed to kill 70. I actually went out and hunted them in my ELC even. I didn't even bother going for anything else, just hunting wheelies. And I got 17 <laughs> kills this week. <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right, to be oh, fair yeah. to the wheelies you killed, how many times did you die? Oh, probably more than that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you were doing God's work, so well done. I think so. Well done. So, yeah, that, that's me. Shut up, Bill. Yeah, promote you oh, to got wheelie. One more. I got promote one you more to wheelie killer. Longer. Yeah, I've got one more for you. And this is because one of the clan lads uh, uh, just mentioned something. So I said I'd, I'd ask this question. He's he's a Dutch lad, um, and his, his name is JDF in the clan. And he says, do, do, do we have any tanks that are Dutch? And I'm not sure we do. In the world, I mean, not just in World of Tanks. I don't think there is a Dutch tank. If anybody knows, can they let me know? That would be cool. Um... Well, I mean, they don't they just they don't make it. Don't they just run around with um, wooden shoes on and stuff? Cogs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He calls me the silly Brit, so I had to get this in. I mean, he. I don't know how you drive a tank wearing clogs. That would be difficult, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, he calls you the silly Brit. He calls me the silly Brit, Blassie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's allowed to because he's European. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I I've was not researched it. I was supposed to shout out somebody. I meant to do that, and I thought I had a message from, him, but it appears I've clicked away from it. Oh man! All right. So sorry, buddy. I, I, guys, like, hey, could you shout me out in a video? I'm like, I would love to, and then uh, I have managed to click away from Daggummit. Sorry, man. Send me a message, dude. Whoever that was, and I'll shout you out. Uh, that is it, man. That's all I've got. You got anything else? I've got one last thing, which is a pilgrim saying. Oh, good. If you want to take this, if you want to take this away with you. Okay. You go. Right. Okay. I always say, always have a plan B, because no plan ever survives first contact with the enemy. That's right. It's a standard tenet, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. They get a so, vote. Exactly. So I would say this also. Choose your platoon mates when you platoon up very carefully, because it's so hard to soar like an eagle. When you're surrounded by turkeys. That's right. <laughs> okay. That's right. Sage words from Pilgrim. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. It is hard to soar the eagles when you're surrounded by turkeys. A crack team of savvy professionals. That's what we are over here. That's what we are. That's right. All right, guys. That is it for Tank. Tank? It's not even Tank Talk. What a, coffee, coffee Talk. Coffee talk. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> That's it for Coffee Talk. I forgot to say, the world... Premier webisode about webisode. Oh, I like that. Yeah, world, I like of, that. world of tanks and stuff. It, whatever. <laughs> this is Guido signing off. See you later. All the best, guys. See you later.